Oh, what a nice crowd. We got a doozy. I haven't used that word for a long time. <laughs> I, I kind of hate to start the monologue on a, a sad note. Oh. But the a gentleman today, the man who figured out how to can tuna, <laughs> died today. <laughs> and his family had an important decision to make, whether to have him packed in oil or water. <laughs> Anyway, uh, most of you from out of town, I assume. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you're, you're kind of in Hollywood. If you go to Hollywood, it's kind of what, the land of dreams? Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, where one day you can be sitting at a soda fountain wearing a tight sweater, and the next day be arrested for being a transvestite. It's just that kind of thing. <laughs> I saw something that bothered me today. <laughs> really bothered me. In the paper USA Today, scientists now said, or geneticists now say, we may all be descended from bacteria. <laughs> Does it bother you that the commissary meatloaf could be a distant cousin? <laughs> God, it bothers me. <laughs> Steve Garvey, retired today. Yeah. Former ball, great, great star with the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. And then I ended up, I believe, with San Diego for five years. And, uh, but you don't have to worry about Steve. He already has a new job. He's going to be a dimple donor to Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I like Steve Garvey. He is a, a clean-cut, classy ball player. Steve Garvey wouldn't even scratch himself on TV. <laughs> He kept Mexican jumping beans in his cup. <laughs> Some news from NBC. The creative geniuses who work for NBC have come up with a new mag news magazine in the works. Do you know what it's called? 90 Minutes. Oh, oh. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Where do they come up with such clever titles like that? If, if it really is a hit, they're going to come up with another one called 3030. <laughs> and wait till you see what they've got in the new fall shows coming up, like Kate and Alvey, uh, Mayhem He Scribbled, and Jake and the Slightly Overweight Guy. <laughs> you know, I, was, I should have taken that joke on the road <laughs> and left it there. I'll bet you don't know whose birthday it was yesterday. Salmon P. Chase. Salmon P. Chase was the Secretary of the United States Treasury under President Abraham Lincoln. Now, you may not be familiar with his name, but I, you certainly know his face. He's on the $10,000 bill. <laughs> well, let's see what's happening politically. That's where all the good humor is. George Bush was on a plane this week, and they took a picture, and the Vice President was eating beef jerky on a stick. And the reporter asked him what his favorite food was. And the vice president said his favorite snack is fried pork rinds with Tabasco. <laughs> hey, if he ever becomes president, I can't wait to get to a state dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? Anyway, Reagan said the other day, they asked him about the Iran-Contra things again. The president said, and I quote, everybody knows everything there is to know about the Iran-Contra scandal. And someday, he hopes to find out also. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you read about the 23-year-old investment counselor in New York who was arrested? He apparently took about $10 million from his clients. He was supposed to put it in the stock market last September, before the crash. He didn't. He bought real estate and valuable art which is now worth more than the clients gave him. And he's being arrested, I want to hire him. <laughs> he's better than mine, you know my investment counselors. Whew. Do we cheat him and how? <laughs> I don't know. They put me in a couple of winners the past year. For example, I get 50% of Bill Cosby's profits, but only from films. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
And I have a whole warehouse full of Ayatollah dashboard statues that did not go well at all. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Little archaeological news, which I throw in occasionally today. Some archaeologists discovered some 5,000-year-old clay tablets that date back to ancient Mesopotamia. Remember that in school? And in those clay tablets was a letter from a king to his son. And it said, go on to war instead of lying around amidst women. Now, can you think 5,000 years from now when they dig up some letters and one says, congratulations, you may already be a winner? <laughs> Good okay. Larry. Larry Holmes, the boxer, is coming out of retirement. He's a grandfather. He says he wants to return to the ring because, as Larry says, he has a strong sense of history. <laughs> I have a feeling he wouldn't be doing this if he has a strong history of sense. <laughs> anyway, tonight. Okay. Tonight on the show, Mr. Milton Burrow is here. <laughs> Milton's the only man who steals from Senator Joe Biden. <laughs> Milton's a little upset. You must forgive him when he comes out. This is the third year in a row. He's uh, missed being on Mr. Blackwell's list of 10 worst-dressed women. <laughs> Just one of those things that happen. Anyway, along with Milton, we have a young comedian, Carol Siskin, and Don Yeso, whom you meet. So stay where you are. And we'll be... Tonight. Milton Berle here, who's written a new book. It's about the Friars Club, and we're going to talk to him about some of the early days in television. Milton goes, when did Milton first go on television? About 1947 or 48? Something like that, yeah. In 40, 1948. And we'll talk to Milton. We have Carol Siskin and, and Don Yeso, who's in a show called Frank's Place, a guy who had never been in the entertainment business, had never acted in his life. The producer met him on an airplane, no. signed him for a television show. He's from New Orleans. Fascinating guy. All right, now you've heard me talk about the NBC... Network. How many of you really know what, it, what a network encompasses? Most of you do? Not many. Yeah, well, no, we're not, what it is, it's like they have affiliated stations. NBC does not own the stations, but they are affiliated with NBC. And I think they have to agree to carry a certain number of NBC programs every week. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. They have certain discretion. Uh, I think the network can, what, own five stations? Yes. But they're affiliates. Uh, for example... KNBC here in Los Angeles is one of the affiliated stations. The reason I'm explaining this, from time to time, Ed will read greetings from a station that's been with NBC for 25 or now, I guess, about 30, 30 years. years yeah. From time to time, the local stations around the country, the affiliates, will send copy out, you've done right. these, yeah. to do promotions for the local station and then shows that they have and so they can play them sometimes after the Tonight Show or during the day to call attention to their shows. And they sent me some copy today. Uh, to do for these local affiliates around the country. So, if you don't mind, uh, I really haven't seen these too much before, but yeah. we've got some cue cards here, and we'll just take time out and, and do these promos for these affiliates. So, have I have over explained this? I think you've, I? No, you've explained it nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Notice how you get older and the hair gets thinner and the oh, comb just goes. The comb swoom. glides right through. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think this is the first one right here. We'll do this one. <clears throat> Are we ready for these? Yes. Uh, Bobby, are we ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's got laryngitis today. Okay, I'll just I'll get these out of the way. It's John and Carson reminding you to tune into Appalachia's finest, the Hillbilly Station, our affiliate WHIL in Squash Possum, Tennessee, where illiteracy is king. <laughs> We're the finest evening news team featuring anchor mom Billy Bob Yoakum, John Doe Yoakum. Sports with Jimmy Dean Yoakum and weather with Billy Jean, Bobby Sue, Verna Louise, Emma May Yoakum. <laughs> Followed by Appalachia's newest first cousin dating game, Darwin Schmarwin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good, That's all right. That was a good example. Well, that was you... an example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That's right. Hawaii, you guys said. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Johnny Carson reminding you, I have a great week ahead of you here on our affiliate KHO right here in Loud Shirt, Hawaii. <laughs> Monday, Celebrity Spotlight will take a look at Hawaiian superstar Don Ho. Tuesday, it's Celebrity Cooks with special guest and amateur gourmet Don Ho. <laughs> Wednesday, don't miss Charity Tug of War. This week's opponents are the Honolulu University Marching Band versus Don Ho. <laughs> then on Saturday, don't miss Whatever Happened To, this week profiling Jack Lord, hosted by Don Ho. <laughs> right in the dumper. <laughs> These aren't really serious. <laughs> These aren't the actual shows they're doing. This is just kind of a satire. <laughs> I'm in it now, aren't I? Yeah, See, yeah. Once you get into it, you got to oh. drive right through. <clears throat> We're ready for this one. This is Johnny Carson coming to you over W-A-A-H-WA in Cape Cart, Massachusetts. Reminding all you Massachusetts natives to tune in tomorrow morning at 9 to AM Cape Carp. Tomorrow's guests are Jack Pa, Jamie Fa, and Terry Ga. <laughs> here on W-A-H. Now so stay tuned for My Mother, the Car. <laughs> Even the cards are fighting me. <laughs> the number one choice of the golden age community of Lake Metamucil, Florida is W-O-L-D. Tonight featuring live coverage of the ice skating extravaganza from the Robinowitz Retirement Home. Yes, it's the annual Oy Vescapades. <laughs> right here on WOLD, bifocal broadcasting at its best. <laughs> oh, yep. Howdy, buckaroos. This is your late night bunkhouse buddy, JC, a moseying down the trail right here on KOW, Limp Lariat, Wyoming, <laughs> where a small motel soap was first whittled. Now, don't miss Chuck Wagon Charlie's cooking show. This week, he'll teach you how to brew a nice bowl of steer skull bullion. Then later on PM, Limp Lariat, the author of Wyoming's bestseller, Horses Who Hate Cowboys and the Cowboys Who Love Them. All here on Moo TV, K-O-W. <laughs> a lot of hills and valleys in this one. <laughs> Johnny Carson, greeting thee from W-T-H-Y, W-V, in thine lovely Amish community of Bearded Guy, Pennsylvania. <laughs> After thee gets finished putting up a barn this weekend for thy neighbor, why don't thou tune into the number one game show in the Pennsylvania Dutch farm country, Neutering for Dollars. <laughs> see thee, see thee soon. See thee soon. Soon, soon. <laughs> Buenos dias, amigos. <laughs> this is Johnny Carson inviting you to watch the Tonight Show on our affiliate KPASA, Cape Passa, <laughs> in the Rio Grande Valley's finest community, Ocupado, Texas. <laughs> the final resting place of the original Clarabelle. Wake up to cartoons Saturday morning, hosted by Border Patrol Ben and his gringo sidekick, Kirk. Later Saturday on K Passa, Sport Beat, it's Borough Demolition Derby. <laughs> and later tonight, following The Tonight Show, stay tuned for the number one local interview program, Strip Search of the Air. Hasta luego. <laughs> no more? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that looked like a Rorschach test of humor, wasn't it? <laughs> Spitballing, okay. In just a moment, Mr. Milton Burrow will come out and talk about his new book, and we have Carol Siskin and Don Yeso. So stay where you are. First guest you all know. Milton Burrow was the first star, the first real superstar of the television industry. Uh, he's responsible for selling of a lot of television sets. I know my family sold theirs. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old show. <laughs> he's celebrating his 40th anniversary in television and his 75th year in show business. He's written a book, came out recently. It's 
Uh, it's really about the Friars Club and his that's contribution uh, to show business in general. And he's got a special coming up about the infancy of television called Milton Berle, The Second Time Around. Would you welcome Mr. Milton Berle? <laughs> Johnny, it's so good to see you. I really mean this. Thank you, Milton. And I want to thank you for that marvelous introduction. I meant it. It's exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to... Oh, by the way, uh, got to get something. I missed the last three jokes in your monologue. Oh, that was the one about the... <laughs> and you're not alone. I'm not alone. <laughs> No, uh, you were talking about Don Ho? Don Ho. In Hawaii, I liked that bit. I, I stayed with Don Ho in his house, at the Ho house, and while I was there... <laughs> three, four... Oh, I got it. Before, I, before we even talk, I got to tell you what happened. I was coming through the, the uh, entrance here, yeah. and they had, have a tour going on. You know, oh, the NBC concept, tours. Yeah. And uh, some old lady, she's about 88 years old. She was cute. 88. 88. <laughs> Wait till I tell it, for God's sake, please. <laughs> and no, it's not a joke, it's true. Uh, she was 88, she walked over to me, she looked at me, she said, Hello, Uncle Milty. <laughs> she says, I love you. Oh. She says, you know, I've been watching you ever since I was a little girl. I said, get the hell out of here. Sweet, <laughs> sweet little old lady. Oh, no, no. Well, we get strange people in no, here. No, no, no. Oh, another, yeah, guy weird people. another guy come over to me. Really? Knowing my age, he said to me, when are you going to retire? Waiting for me to retire is like, is like uh, leaving the porch light on for Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> <laughs> she, don't, she don't know who the hell Jimmy Hoffa is. This woman. You're never going to retire. Look in the yellow pages under cement. Yeah. What? Uh, what'd you say? I'll just jump in. Jump in any time. Yeah. Just give me a kick under the desk and no I'll jump in. When, it, when you heard the theme song. Now, you, you went on television in 1948, right? 1948. God almighty. And, and you did the first show out of this building when it was built here at NBC. Uh, absolutely, right here in Burbank. And you worked in 6B in New York? 6B. Now, you did it all live in that time, even though we're close to live. But right. we, do, we don't edit anything. I mean, what, goes, what we do tonight goes out. Even the bit I just did after the monologue. That will actually <laughs> be sent to New York unless they shoot it down at Omaha, which I hope they do. <laughs> Maybe send it back. But you had no time to edit. It went out, and that was it. Well, we did it live. We had live audiences, and that's why I got the gray hair. Yeah. Right? And if you told a joke and it bombed, you just stood there like a dummy. Yeah, like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know the feeling. And... Uh, I'll tell him when he cut it out. Can I book you another here? Certainly. Yeah, help us and uh, I, uh, I don't know if you know this, but you're invited. Invited? Ruth, invi oh, by the way, how is your wife, Alice? She's lovely, thank you. Ruth sends her love. Thank you're you. invited to my 80th birthday. When is it? Come July. In July, July well, congratulations. 12th. Congratulations. 80 years old. Oh, 80 years old. I, I feel like a 20-year-old, but there's never one around. What, what the hey? What the hey? And you have the body of a 20-year-old, and you better give it back. You're getting it all wrinkled. All wrinkled. Yes. <laughs> you, want to, you want to light that? No. Anyway, uh, yeah. Back up, please. See, here, let me... What is this, a permit. prop? What are you... Permit me. Permit me. Here. There we go. Wow, wow. Why do you give me the wow, wow? Mm. Just hold your hand there. <laughs> I got the light. I got You're the light. getting too old to inhale. <laughs> You've got to pull in on that. Hey, I'm not going to inhale while I'm sitting next to you, but I'll tell you the truth. Put the hand. Don't stop. Oh. Johnny, yes, I got to tell you something, and this is really the truth. I, uh, everybody, it's on all the paper. I'm going to be 80 years old, right. and, uh, I'd like to say something to the gentlemen that are in the studio and the gentlemen watching the show. That sex over 75 is sensational, especially the one in the winter. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 
No, Johnny, you know Ruth? You know Ruth? Certainly do. Ruth and I have sex almost every day in a week. <laughs> almost Monday, almost Tuesday. <laughs> Now, now when, I, when, I, when, I, when we want to make love, uh, have a little uh, fudgy wudgy, um, I gotta go through what they call uh, uh, Jewish foreplay. What is that? That's a good string. Thank you. <laughs> what is Jewish foreplay? Jewish foreplay, that's four hours of begging. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then there's Italian foreplay. Italian foreplay? Yeah. Marie, I'm home. Now, uh, <laughs> boys, the band are laughing. Oh. Okay, I gotta, uh, I gotta interrupt for a commercial here, and we'll come back. Wow, wow, stay oh, where you are. Up the When you went on television and your show was on Tuesday nights, I can still remember. The country literally, like in the old radio days with Amos and Andy, the country literally came to a standstill. People were home on Tuesday night. The bars, which were the first to have television, people actually stood outside the saloon. You younger kids won't remember this. They actually stayed outside store windows looking in at the television set for sale to watch this man's show. Yeah. There were only about, what, a half a million sets or something? It just was incredible. Everything slowed down. And you were outrageous in those days. You came out dressed up in women's clothes and mascara and all of that, and it was you were crazy. Yeah, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Put a skirt on you, right? Yeah. Thank you. Any I was listening to, the, to Doc Schwartz over here. And, Doc Severinsen. Uh, Severinsen. <laughs> Doc Severinsen. And I, I discovered, you know, we did the Texco show 40 right. years ago. Right. I looked, there's one musician that did that show. In I think the, you're talking yeah. about Conti Candoli. Yeah, right? 40 years ago. I remember him very well because I never forget a suit. <laughs> anyway, there were about six million television sets, and, and a few years later, something like 26 million sets. And you were one of the first people. NBC signed you yes, to about a 30 year no, contract. It was a lifetime contract. A lifetime contract. It expired eight years ago. <laughs> Did you, did you get money from them every year? Did I get money? Yeah. yeah. That's great. All those years. Should have got more. Yeah. But that's NBC. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you an average hour on television. If you know what, you, what your show would cost the network today if you were on that same variety show, would probably cost to put on something like a million or over a million dollars. What was your budget? You have, do you remember for those first well, early I years? I first went on in 1948, June 8th. The budget for the show, if the audience know what I mean by below the line and above right. the line, costumes and time, all due respect, and musicians, which costs us the most, and uh, <laughs> strong union. Yes. And uh, you ask me how much it costs, don't fall down. No, I, I probably won't. For the whole hour, the whole thing cost $15,000. You couldn't get a guest star nowadays. Oh, if you wanted that, Diana right? Ross today yeah. and want to pay her $15,000, she'd go... <laughs> That's it. You, know, yeah. <laughs> you don't get a whole song. No song, no song. No. Are your special's coming up the 18th? Yes, next Monday. Uh, matter of fact, the whole week is called Borough Week. NBC is giving the whole week to you. Yes, it's a syndicated show, John, and it's called The Second Time Around. Uh, why it's called The Second Time Around is because those shows, as you know, were done live, mm -hmm. and uh, you got what you... The audience got what they saw. You and know what kinescope I mean? in those yeah, days. It was which is filmed off of the we air. Yeah, it was filmed off the air. And we could not rerun kinescope. Right. When tape came in, then uh, we used tape. So these uh, have been in my archives 156 hours of the Texaco show. Right. So the second time around, this show that I'm doing is scenes and stars from the 50s, the Texaco show. And it's Elvis Presley. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Bob Hope. You had everybody in the world on debuts. the show. Debuts. They were all debuts. And uh, Phil Silvers and our president, beloved president, Ronald Reagan, as an actor who was very funny. Right. <laughs> and, uh, well, and I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And, and he still is. And he still is. Yes. I, uh, I hope, I hope, <laughs> I wish I'd have said that. <laughs> you will. 
<laughs> we both work for each other. I mean, know, we, we got a, we got some excerpt from the show here, a little clip. You got some clips? Yeah, we're going to show a little a piece of uh, some of the things that are going to be on, on the show coming up on January 18th. Watch the monitor in the Elvis, studio. How can I get these girls to scream over me this way? I really mean that. How can I do that? Uh, Mr. Burrow, I, I don't think you like it. <laughs> I wouldn't like one. What do you mean? No, I mean... I don't like it, all these girls screaming, always tearing your clothes off, always, you know, trying to rip you apart, always trying to kiss you. I don't like it. You don't? Like it. Someone must have stomped on his head with those blue suede shoes. <laughs> I'm really very happy to be here, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly to be able to fill Uncle Milty's shoes. <laughs> Farseur there, huh? Absolutely. Like well, that was my style. That still is my style. Uh, but uh, it's remarkable. Do you see Sinatra? I would tell you. He weighed 108. <laughs> it's marvelous to see those performers again in the well, early days. You're going to see the whole thing this coming week, signing Jenny. Interesting about Elvis, you know, who was, who was a nice young man. He always referred to everybody he ever met as Mr. Burrow. When I first met him, he was a tremendous star. He was no, Mr. No, not yeah. What? Mr. Burrow. No, he would say Mr. What, Burrow, Freddy, Mr. Carson. You're not in the show. Just sit there, please. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie's enjoying his golden years over there in the chair. <laughs> About Elvis, always, you know, Mr. Polite, Burrow, yeah. Mr. Burrow, uh, Mr. Carson. Yeah. Oh, I got to tell you one story. Yeah. One story, and then I got to be on the set June. And uh, <laughs> uh, Elvis did uh, one of the first shows with me, and uh, I met him at the airport uh, with a limousine, and he had Colonel Parker with him, Tom, Tom Martin, Parker. Right. And he was a brilliant guy, and uh, he came in, sat in the limousine, and Elvis was seated between Colonel Parker and myself. Colonel Parker was managing him then. So I said, uh, Elvis, I'm very happy that you're going to be on the show. I have a contract here, and as I was about to hand it to him, Colonel Parker says, give me that. Don't show that to the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? But on account of Colonel Tom Parker, with the right. work that he's done, or he did. Right. That's why Elvis. There's only one Elvis. Got yeah. Him. yeah, they had a unique relationship. It was almost a 50-50 relationship, which is unusual in that business. I should say so. Anyway, the book is called B.S. I Love You. Yeah. It's a fascinating account of... But they're uh, laughing. They don't know what B.S. means. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Barbara Streisand. It's not Barbara Stanwyck. It's not Bobby Short. Right. It is exactly what, what, it's what it says. To be. And it's 60 funny years with the famous and the infamous. I hope it's a big hit. It's a fun book to read. A lot of great stories. Did you like it? I loved it. I'm glad. And I thank you for coming. Hey, I thank you. I'm and glad. Monday be. night. I'll see you. We'll Johnny. be there the second time around. Thank you, Mildy. We'll be right back. See where you are. Fantastic review tonight. Here's a very funny young lady who's been with us once before. Uh, Carol's going to be performing tomorrow and Saturday at a place called Stitches. Obviously a good name for a comedy club in Philadelphia. 
and January the 18th through the 24th at the Punchline in Atlanta. Would you welcome Carol Siskin. Carol! <laughs> It's wonderful to be here, and you sound like you're in a terrific mood. You are, aren't you? Yeah. And I think I know why. The holidays are over, kids. We made it. We did. I mean, it's fun while it's happening. It's crazy, though. I mean, it's nice to see your folks. It's nice to see the relatives. It's just that I always leave with a headache this big. And it's got mother written all over it. Do they take a class? Are they the same for one reason? They're not happy until all of their kids are married. I swear, I was called for jury duty. My mother swore it was my last chance to meet a lawyer. I met a great guy. I can't see him for another 10 to 12 years. I should understand men better than I do because I grew up with men. I have brothers. I wanted sisters. They're better for a girl, aren't they? Teach you how to put on makeup, how to do your hair, give you dating tips. You know what brothers teach you? How to unhook a bra with your teeth. <laughs> I never needed to know this. My brothers hated me because my mother forced them to take me out. They never had fun. I always had fun. I would have had more fun if they punched holes in the box, but... <laughs> you know, because I had brothers, my mother was so afraid I'd be a tomboy, she put rouge on me my first day of school. I am not kidding. She said, you look pale. Of course I look pale. I was the only girl in kindergarten wearing a strapless evening gown. <laughs> Other kids are taking naps on rugs. I'm sitting up on a piano singing the man that got away. <laughs> you know, kids will come over to each other the very first day. They'll go, hi, what's your name? A little boy came over to me. He said, hi, how much? <laughs> One of my brothers, it's interesting, he's a lawyer. I asked him if I should draw up a will. I don't know. He said, don't bother. No one's going to walk six flights up to get your stuff. <laughs> it's interesting about siblings. We know how to get to each other, don't we? Yeah. My brothers get to me by being morbid. They tell me they're buying cemetery plots and they're including me in their plans. <laughs> that they're buying a couple of extra plots, one for me and another one in case I get a date last minute. <laughs> No wonder I get depressed going home. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. I love being depressed. You gotta get into it. <laughs> you know what I mean? A good depression? Come on, it's a chance to sleep 20 hours a day. <laughs> and eat haagen the other four. <laughs> good, you know it. Good, then you know Sara Lee, too. <laughs> Sara Lee, what a gal. I get crazy thinking about a chocolate Sara Lee in a tin frozen. I don't let it thaw because I don't cook, but... <laughs> oh. I don't cook. I use a smoke alarm as a timer. <laughs> it works. It works. The alarm goes off. You know it needs another 10 minutes. <laughs> I did something really stupid. I bought a Sara Lee, ate the whole thing. Then I do something really stupid. I read the package. Serves 12. <laughs> Who are these people? Anorexics with no sense of proportion. <laughs> they must be the same people that buy ice cream in those little Dixie cups, eat them and then say, oh, I'm stuffed. <laughs> It's a ripoff. Let's face it. You go in, you buy the biggest bag of potato chips in the store, four chips in the package. With an explanation. I'll say something like, contents may have settled during packing. Yeah. Right, may have settled in the stomach of the guy packing them. <laughs> Somewhere, there's a man with a hose blowing in air and sucking out my potato chips. <laughs> you know what really gets me? Junk food that comes gift-wrapped. Before I die, I don't care what happens, I want to meet the owner of Pepperidge Farm. One minute with him, I want to say, Mr. Farm, can I call you Peppy? Do you think maybe you could give me three more cookies and keep your stinking doilies? He gives you those 
He gives you those little skeleton shells between the cookies. Don't they look like hats for small nurses? <laughs> they do. They say they pack it that way for freshness. Right, you tell me who needs an expiration date on Pepperidge Farm cookies. <laughs> They're gone before they reach the cashier. <laughs> and even if you try to eat healthy, forget it. They make it impossible. They give you stuff like cottage cheese. Cottage cheese? Who invented this? <laughs> and how did they know when they were done inventing it? <laughs> Right. It doesn't. It looks like it's already been eaten. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never buy anything you have to order by the size of its curd. This is my motto. It's like, of course, it's a perfect diet food. Look at it. Do you have an appetite now? You're probably all yogurt freaks, too. I hate to be the one to tell you, but yogurt is cottage cheese that went bad. Let me tell you about Don Yeso. This young man you're going to meet has an interesting story. Not long ago, he was going to school in New Orleans. He met a television producer on an airplane, and now he's one of the regulars in that producer's television series, which is called Frank's Place. Would you welcome Don Yeso? Don. <laughs> Same here, same here. Thanks for those a nice little uh, introduction thing. Well, that's all right. My pleasure. Appreciate Things it. going well on the show? Ooh, yeah, real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People really don't believe your story. It is so bizarre. It's like something that you'd make a movie about. You met this guy uh, on a plane. He put you in his television show. You'd had no acting experience. Did you ever have to get together and meet with the network executives before they... Okay. Yeah, that was quite a little experience there. You walk into this uh, room and they got all of these executives in there. And you walk on in and you say, hello, hey, how y'all doing? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Nobody says anything. So uh, I guess they weren't too impressed by my resume I had there either because I had a little picture. It was a, one of them little Polaroid pictures you took and I was waving in it. <laughs> that was it. No eight by ten. No, I, you know, they should send a picture. So I said, hey, okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, you know, I read for them and everything. And uh, they were little, they said, uh, uh, Hugh, that's the, that's the executive producer, yeah. Mr. Hugh Wilson. They said, Hugh, I think, uh, you know, you said you were going to throw us a few curves, but you didn't say you were going to throw the whole batting cage at us yeah. with this guy. So uh, he says, look, listen, give me Donnie. He says, it's easier to teach him how to act than it is to teach an actor how to talk like him. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, thank God for small wonders. Yeah, you do have a, a different accent. Uh, people would think almost you're from New York somewhere, but you're from New Orleans. Yes, sir. I was is born it, and raised there. Yeah, has the accent caused any problems with the show? Or that's what they wanted, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, as a matter of fact, uh, in one of the episodes, uh, they, you know, in the screening room, when they go through all the shows and everything, they were watching dailies and a rough cut of the show. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Wilson, you know, pushes the pause button. He says, I can't understand the damn thing Donnie's saying. He says, why don't we just subtitle him? And they go in ahead and they started doing it. So Subtitling? Yeah, they thought he was kidding. So an episode comes on out, and when I'm talking, <coughs> there's words underneath me. <laughs> and I said, and I went, oh, oh, my God. I said, everybody in America wrote in and said they don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but he said, no, 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 don't worry about it. We just thought it was a nice joke. So I'm the first American actor on an English-speaking <laughs> television show with English subtitles. <laughs> That's a first. Yeah, I got to try and get in a Guinness book or yeah. something, something. How many shows have you done now? Um, uh, fifth, somebody said 15 or 16 shows? 18. 18. Yeah, 18. Now, uh, looking back on the first show, what do you think, looking back at it, what do you think you're acting now that you've had a little more experience on the first show? Well, as a matter of fact, I was real fortunate because uh, I just got through filming an episode last week which Shorty, the character I play, was featured in. Oh. And uh, so uh, they really put me to the guns, and, and hopefully it turns out good. Yeah. I'm wood and everything else. But uh, <laughs> I seem like a woodpecker, but not going to say much more lately. <laughs> So, uh, it, it, but the, I remember the very first time we did the pilot, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, and I'm like, looking around, and I'm saying, man, this is Tim Reed. I'm, I'm, he's the star of the show. Yeah, I know. I said, man, I'm, I'm acting with Tim Reed. You know, I got lines and stuff. So, <laughs> so, so they got this thing, you know, and he, he, he throws this line to me. He says, uh, 
Whew, is it always this hot down here? And I thought I was doing real good. And I was like, it don't get hot down here for another month or so. And I thought I was great. It was terrible. Yeah. But, you know, so... Yeah. You're, it's getting better, though, huh? Yeah, I lucked out. Oh, yeah. So don't ever change too much. Uh, do your folks see the show? Oh, New yeah. Orleans? Yeah. Well, what do they think about it's it? It's their favorite TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Mom is there every week, huh? She changed her life, I'll bet, too, huh? Yeah, she's the most popular lady at the bingo game. Yeah. Huh? yeah. yeah. I know, got the a first son on t- television. Yeah, well, she uh, she was telling me the, the, when she was at the bingo game and, yeah. and everything. You got, I mean, these are nice ladies, you know. Sure. And uh, so uh, they get all excited about stuff. And the first time my picture was in Inquirer, no bad story now, yeah. just you know for the fall. She come home with forty five copies in Inquirer because everybody at the bingo game thought she didn't have a copy. <laughs> she had plenty of copies. Yeah, huh? she got plenty of copies. Now, now. last time you were here, you were all excited because you met uh, Jill St. John, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, have you met some other, uh, yeah. met some other biggies? Yeah. Who have you met? Yeah. I, uh, I got a little embarrassed. I kind of embarrassed myself. Yeah. I was at this uh, CBS thing, you know, they, they sent me to to uh, try and promote the show. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I looked across the room, you know, and there was Miss Barbara Eden there. You Barbara know? Eden? Who, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. yeah. You know, because she's got the, you know. <laughs> Arthritis? No, no, no. Oh, no, she got the mammary glands, you well, know? Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. That's what they call them down in New Orleans, huh? Yeah, no, I was just, just I'm trying to keep the show clean. What would, you call them, what would you call them in New Orleans? I mean, within reason. I mean... Uh, pool, I don't know, pool. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. We're so just... you were kind of shook up when you met her, huh? Yeah, so, well, you know, I was, you know, walked on over across the room, you know, adjusted myself and everything, and stuck my hand right in the middle of this group of people. And I said, how you doing? I'm dying, yes. So I used to dream of Jeannie all the time. And I went, oh, my. <laughs> Like she had never heard that before. I said, oh, my God. Never, and it was like a silence. And I went, I, 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 I'm I sorry, I didn't mean it. And so I just, you know, I, I tried to do that too. Yeah, we'll be right back. It's good having you here. I hope you come back, Liz. I'd like to check on your career and how it's going along and all these people you meet. Oh, believe me, I hope it keeps on going so you keep checking. Okay. (laughs) Good night. I'm humbled by that applause.